Welcome back to Applied Algebra and Trigonometry. Today we're going to be talking about systems of two linear equations in two unknowns. Let's look at two equations. Let's look at the equation y equals 2x plus 1 and the equation y equals negative 3x plus 6. I have already drawn the line that represents y equals 2x plus 1. Or you could think of it the other way. 2x plus 1 represents that line. To make it even more clear which line I'm talking about, here I have labeled two points on the line, 0, 1, and negative 3, negative 5. And here is the line represented by y equals negative 3x plus 6, or y equals negative 3x plus 6 is the equation represented by the line I have drawn in green. So if the yellow line is the set of all points x, y that make y equals 2x plus 1 true, and if the green line is the set of all points x, y that make y equals negative 3x plus 6 true, then the point 1, 3 is the one point that satisfies or makes true both equations. So we say that 1, 3 the point 1, 3 is the solution to this system of two linear equations. Note that this system has two variables. Two variables in the first equation, two variables in the second equation. We do not have three variables. As long as we have two variables in two equations, we can solve them. Graphing two equations works just great you, if you, as long as you can graph them exactly and read what that number is. But that's a little bit difficult for this system of equations in which the coordinates of the point of intersection are 3 fifths and negative 1 half, which you could easily read from that, right? No. So we need to have some other way to solve systems of equations. And in fact, we have not one way, but two ways. The first method we will talk about is solving by substitution. And the first step of that is to solve one of the linear equations for one of the unknowns. So using algebraic techniques, we solve that first equation for y to get 2x plus 1. And now we can take this value that is equal to y and substitute it into the second equation and solve that. So the second equation, let's bring it down here to work on it, becomes, instead of y, I'm going to put in 2x plus 1. Okay, and in that second equation, I then have plus 3x equals 6. Okay, there's nothing to distribute outside the parentheses here. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of those parentheses. I'm looking at 2x plus 1 plus 3x equals 6. Combine like terms, I get 5x plus 1 equals 6. Solving algebraically, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. 5x equals 5, and divide both sides by 5, I get x equals 1. So, ta-da, I found one of my unknowns. I'm not done yet. I just used the second equation here, where I've indicated in green. Okay, now I'm going to put this x back up into the first equation. Go back to the first, the other equation, whichever equation you did not just use. Use that one. So y minus 2 times 1 equals 1. What value for y makes that true? Let's solve for y. Adding 2 to both sides, y equals 3. So our solution, and please write it, as a coordinate pair is 1, 3. x equals 1, y equals 3. But wait, there's more. You must check your answer in both of the original equations. So let's make some room to do that. All right, we're going to take that 1 and we're going to put it into the original equation. I'm going to do my check down here y minus 2x equals 1 was one of the original equations. I'm going to put 1 in for x, 
and I'm going to put the 3 in for the y. Okay, my other equation was y plus 3x equals 6, and in the same way, I'm going to put in 3 for my y value, and the x equals 1 that I solved for. And let's work these out. 3 minus 2 equals 1. 1 equals 1. Yes. I like to see you work it all the way out till it is equal, exactly equal on each side. And then we have 3 plus 3 equals 6, or 6 equals 6. It does check, and therefore this is your final answer. And you have solved that system of equations. Let's return to the first system of equations at which we looked y equals 2x plus 1, and y equals negative 3x plus 6. We solved it graphically, or I solved it graphically, okay. But we can also solve this by substitution. So if you take a look, each of these equations has already been solved for y. So pick your favorite and do the substitution. Just because I'm going to substitute this value for y, or this representation, representation of y into the first equation that's listed. So I'm going to put negative 3x plus 6 equal to 2x plus 1. Once again, there's nothing outside the parentheses there to distribute, so I'm just going to rewrite it. Negative 3x plus 6 equals 2x plus 1, and start solving for x. I'm going to move negative 2x to the other side by dividing it from both sides, and then I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. So I get neg negative 5x equals negative 5, and if I divide by negative 5, I'm going to get x equals 1. You can go back and check if you want, but I'm pretty sure that's what we got for x originally. Now I did a substitution into the first equation in the list, so now I'm going to substitute this x in here, okay? So I am now going to have the equation y equals negative 3 times 1 plus 6, so therefore y equals 3, and my solution is 1, 3. Let's, let's go ahead and check it, though. y equals 2x plus 1 is one of my equations, and y equals negative 3x plus 6 is the other, so I have to substitute my values into each equation. 3 goes in for y, 1 goes in for x. 3 goes in for y, and I guess I should put parentheses around that too to be consistent. And on this side we have 3 equals 2 plus 1. It is true that 3 equals 3. And for this equation, we have 3 equals negative 3 plus 6, and it is true that 3 equals 3. When you are plugging in your answer to check it, it is not necessary that these two equations wind up being exactly the same, as long as when you are checking, you wind up with a true statement at the end. You're fine. It checks. If your check comes out to something like, oh, I don't know, 12 equals 16, that is not true. You have made an error either in your solution or in your check. But algebra is a wonderful thing because when you are solving systems of equations like this, if your check doesn't work out, you know you've made an error. You can go back and correct it before I grade your work or before your lander crashes into Mars. Time for the next method of solution. We're going to be performing solution by addition. But first, let's take a look at all of the equations we've worked with so far. If you notice, we have two different kind of types of equations. Now, they're all linear, don't get me wrong. But in certain ones, they look a little different. These two are solved for y. These four are not solved for y. But that's OK. So ones that are solved for y are already primed for solving by substitution. But our equations don't have to be in the y equals mx plus b form in order to solve by addition. They do have to be set up 
so that common variables are above each other, or at least that makes this process a whole lot easier. If you write your equations with your x's over your x's and your y's over your y's, and we have a general form of writing that that looks about like this. Some coefficient times x plus perhaps the same, perhaps different, coefficient times y equals some constant. Could be 0, could be negative, could be positive, could be pi, some constant. But we're going to have two equations, right? And it's not going to be very interesting if they're exactly the same equation. It's the same line. But to differentiate between them, we put subscripts of 1 in the first equation that we write and subscripts of 2 in the second. If we're just talking about the general forms for solving a system of equations, we're going to deal in specifics though. So let's do a specific system of equations. I just showed you this to show you that you need to line up your variables. First step, write the equations in ax plus by equals c format. Oh, done. Next, we multiply all terms of each equation by a constant so that the coefficients of one unknown will be the same, ignoring plus or minus, ignore the sign in both equations. Okay, so that means if you're going to multiply this first equation by something, you have to multiply y by that number and negative 2x by that number and 1 by that number. Same thing, every term must be multiplied by a number if you're going to do it. So we're going to ignore the signs. Don't worry about plus, plus here, minus, plus here. Don't worry about it. I want to get the coefficient of either my y's or my x's to have the same number. All right, and in order to do that, I am going to multiply by 1. And multiply this by 1 and this by 1 and this by 1 and this by 1 and this because my y's already have the same coefficient of 1. That was easy. The next step. If the numerically equal coefficients, in our case the y's, have different signs, then add the equations. We do not have different signs. So what are we going to do? Here's what we do. And this is worded slightly differently than it is in your book. If the numerically equal coefficients have the same sign, yes, we have positive 1 in front of both of those y's, multiply one of the equations by negative 1 and then add. Now your book talks about subtraction, which is basically what we're doing, but I like to think of it that way. So I'm going to multiply this second equation by negative 1. It means I'm going to multiply every part of that second equation by negative 1. So let's make some room to do that. Okay, y minus 2x equals 1. It's going to stay exactly the same. But when I distribute this, I have to multiply every term in that second equation by negative 1. So I get negative y minus 3x equals negative 6. And now I'm going to add y minus y gives you 0. I'm not even going to write it. Negative 2x minus 3x gives you negative 5x. And 1 minus 6 gives you negative 5. And now I have one equation with one unknown or one variable. If I divide both sides by negative 5, I get x equals 1, and I'm on my way. Okay, now I'm going to take this x, and I'm going to choose an equation to put it into. I'm going to put it into this one. You choose. doesn't matter. All right, so y minus 2 times 1 equals 1. I'm going to solve for y now. y minus 2 equals 1. That means y, add 2 to both sides, equals 3. So my answer is 1, 3, as we said before. And finally, check your answer in both equations. Okay, here's another system of equations. First, we need to write the equations in the ax plus by equals c format, in this general format. So let's rewrite whatever we have to rewrite. In order to get this into that format, I'm going to have to subtract 2y from both sides. I'm going to do under one side as I would do into the other, the golden rule of algebra. So 3x minus 2y 
equals 4. x plus 3y equals 2. All right, can I add them now? Am I done? No. I do not have a pair of coefficients. Neither my x's nor my y's have coefficients that are numerically the same. So I'm going to have to manipulate these a little further. Okay. So let's see. Should I go out to the side? I think I should. All right. So what are we going to do with these now? Let's go ahead. I'm looking at 3x and 1x. So if I multiply this second equation by 3, then my x's will be numerically the same. To get the y's the same, I'm going to have to multiply the first equation by 3 and the second equation by 2, so I have a 6 in both of these positions. That's more work than I want to do right now. So I'm going to multiply this entire equation by 3. That means I'm going to have 3 times x plus 3 times 3y plus 3 times 2. Okay, my equation, my first equation here, does not change. I did not multiply it by anything. Now, can I add them? Well, yes, I could. And I get 6x plus 7y equals 10, and I will not have gotten rid of any variable. I still have just as much work ahead of me. So, we're going to have to manipulate this again. Okay, this time, because I like to subtract vertically, I'm going to multiply this second equation once again by negative 1. All right, some of you are already saying, hey, wait, could I not have multiplied by negative 3 here? Yes, you could have, but I'm following the instructions in your book. But feel free to multiply by a negative value as needed. So let's continue. Here we have 3x minus 2y equals 4. And now I'm going to have a negative 3x minus 9y equals negative 6. And when I add those up, ta-da, the x's add to be 0. My y's add to be negative 11. And my constant is a negative 2. So I'm going to take this equation, negative 11y equals negative 2. And I solve this equation y equals 2 elevenths. No, I have not made an error. Yes, you may sometimes wind up with fractions or decimals or sometimes irrational numbers, depending on what we are working with here. But yes, that is the answer. Almost. We still need an x, right? Okay, so now I'm going to substitute this equation into one of the original... Wait a minute, the original ones aren't there. Where do I have to go to find my original equations? I have to go all the way back to here. Okay, I realize I have this nice scrolling board. You're probably going to be limited by an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. So I'll do one more example after this that I will try to keep on one screen. I'm going to put that answer that I have, y equals 2 elevenths, into one of these two original equations. And looking at them, Neither one of them is very pretty for this use. I can't put two elevenths in there and get rid of a denominator anywhere. So I'm just going to choose one. I'm going to use my x plus 3y equals 2 equation. So I'm going to plug in for y this 2 elevenths equals 2. So that gives me x plus 6 elevenths equals 2. That gives me x equals 2 minus 6 over 11, and I have to convert my 2 into uh, 22 elevenths. And that gives me an answer of 16 elevenths. That is what x is equal to. So right now, I believe my answer is 16 elevenths and 2 elevenths. All right, so let's check this. Remember, we have to check in both equations. So one of my equations was x plus 3y equals 2. And my other equation was uh, 3x minus 2y equals 4. Let me make the substitutions. 
and there are my checks. You may pause the video and check my checks and let me know if I've made a mistake, but I do believe this is the correct solution to that system of equations. And here's another example of a system of two linear equations in two unknowns. The first equation looks pretty much like what we've been working with, but the second equation throws in some decimals. The thing to remember here is we can multiply by anything that makes this simpler for us. So let's take them one at a time. It's simpler without decimals, isn't it? And these are each expressed only to the tenth. So if we multiply the entire equation by 10, watch what happens. We get rid of the decimal. We get 6x minus 6y equals 13. Hmm, that looks more familiar. Still, 6x, 3x, 6y, 2y, 4. Okay, so we're going to have to multiply the first equation by something to get it numerically equal. Well, let's go ahead and get rid of the x's. Well, do we want to do that? Look, the x's, we have a positive 3, we have a positive 6. We have a positive 2 for the y. We have a negative 6 for the coefficient of y on the other one. So if we just multiply this first equation by 3, it's not going to help us get rid of the x, because it will give us 9x. But when we distribute this 3 here, so we have to distribute it to all places, we're going to get a positive 6y. Look at that. that those y's are going to add to be 0. OK, so now we can add. 15x equals uh, 25. OK, well, you're going to wind up with a fraction, but not that bad a fraction because we can reduce that. If you divide 5 into the top you get 5, 5 into the bottom you get 3. I highly recommend you leave this as an imp improper fraction. I am fine with improper fractions unless you're doing some application problem where you need to convert it back to decimal. Wait a minute, we are doing decimals. We have whole numbers and decimals. So when we get down to our very final answer, let's express it as decimals. But for now, I'm pretty comfortable with fractions. I'm going to take that fraction, and I am going to substitute it into the first equation, because it didn't have any decimals, and it isn't an original equation. If I try to substitute that into the other equation, I have to go back to its original form with the decimals. I'm not messing with that right now. No, it's too late at night when I'm videotaping this. OK. Videotaping. I'm showing my age. I'm recording it. OK. Here we go. Now when I do this multiplication, look at that. Boom. My fraction disappears. OK, subtract 5 from both sides. 2y equals negative 1. Well, I get a fraction again. OK, negative 1 half. So my answer at the moment is 5 thirds and negative one half. But I started with some decimals and whole numbers. Let's change these to decimals. It's going to have to be a decimal approximation. It's not going to be exactly equal to something when we're dealing with thirds. Since my decimals were to the tenths place, I'm going to say this is equal to 1.7. And negative one half is equal to negative 0 0.5. OK. So now I have to check my answer. These answers are equivalent, right? So now I have to substitute my answers into each of the original questions or equations to check them. Let's put this into the original equation, 3x plus 2y equals 4. So that's going to be 3 times 5 thirds. And just as it did before, that 3 is going to disappear. Plus 2 times negative 1 half equals 4. Look at that. that fraction is going to disappear too, so I have 5 minus 1 equals 4. If you can read that chicken scratch. My second equation has coefficients that have decimal points in them, so I'm going to use my decimal approximation here and my exact decimal answer here. OK, 
Okay, and I'll move that over so I have just a little more room. And here I have 1.02 plus 0 0.3 equals 1.3. And when I add these up, I get 1.32 equals 1.3. Ah, oh, what happened? Is that not equal? The thing is, this is an approximation. So the best I'm going to get here is an approximation. And if I round this side to the tenths place, I get 1.3. So I'm calling that good. It all checks out. Oops, I did not quite finish my previous check. Ah, so that becomes 4 equals 4. Done now. This is correct. However, since we started with decimals, this one will be the preferred form. There, I fit it all on one screen. I'm still kind of sloppy with the Apple Pencil. It doesn't feel quite the same as a pencil on a piece of paper. So I'm sure yours will be much neater than mine and easier to read. I will see you in class, and we will talk about uh, one more concept. Well, two more. We're going to talk about dependent and inconsistent systems. We will also take a look at some application problems. See you then.